Hi, this is Nuno, the Corsair. Today we will have a look on how to install Rancher Desktop, but with a small twist, we will do it on Linux. So if we go to the website rancherdesktop.io, we will have some information about what is Rancher Desktop, why Rancher Desktop has been created, and more importantly for us, how it works, what are the tools behind, and what are the processes when it's installed. But let's get ahead and install it directly. So at the top of the page, we will see the button Install Rancher Desktop. This button will send you directly to the GitHub repository on the release pages. So we don't have to find your way through GitHub, which is quite nice already. Then by expanding the Assets option, we will see the packages for Windows and Mac as previously in the other versions. But since it's the latest version, we will also have the choice to download the DEB or RPM package, depending on the Linux distribution that we are running. As you can guess, I'm running OpenSUSE. So I pre-downloaded the RPM package. Let's head out to a terminal. Here, if I list my downloads directory, you can see that I already downloaded the Venture Desktop 061 version and the RPM package. So now, using the package manager called Zipper for OpenSUSE, I will be able to install directly Rancher Desktop from the package file. Here, the package manager will act as if we were using or installing a normal package from any repository. It will have a look on which package and if it's new or updating it, and it will ask us if we want to continue. In this case, I will press enter as the yes option is the default one. Then we will be welcoming with a red message. Normally it's bad, but in this case, if we read through it, it simply states that the signature is unknown, not filled, but unknown from the package manager. This is normal. We downloaded a package directly from GitHub instead of installing it from a repository from OpenSUSE. So here, knowing from where I downloaded it, I can ignore this warning and press enter. The package manager will check if there's any conflicts and it will install the package. And as you can see, this is quite fast. Once this has been installed, let's jump to another workspace. And as OpenSUSE is running GNOME, I will press the super key or Windows key or command key. And then I will search for Rancher. Here you can see that this is my application and the icon. So I will press and this will open the UI. The first time, we will be welcome with a small pop-up stating which version of Kubernetes do we want to run. So remember, by Kubernetes here, we are speaking about K3S specifically. So we will pick the latest one, the 121.6, and I will press accept. Now, before we go through the old tabs on the left side, we can see here that something is happening. We'll see in a second what it was. But first, we have the general page where it will state the project status is beta, so it's stable with some bugs. Not for production yet, but quite stable and can be used. And definitely can be tested, and any feedback is very welcome. The feedback, actually, can be given through the Rancher Desktop Slack channel. Or, if you find any issue, there's a link that will send us directly, if I click on it, will send us directly to the issues page of the Rancher Desktop repository. This is quite handy, so you don't have to try to find where you should do something. So, back to the UI page. Now, if I click on Kubernetes settings, remember something for the ones who look at it, but there was a VM being created. In this case, here we refined 
again the version that we selected prior and then we, as it's a small vm we can also set the resources allocated like the memory six gigabytes in this case for me and the cpus two of them finally here we'll find the port that will be used for communicating with the Kubernetes cluster. In this case, it's a default port 6443. And to show you as how it works fine, I will actually change the port and put it on 16443. Here, there's a small warning message that states that, OK, it's OK to change the port, but before you will need to reset. So I will have to simply press the reset Kubernetes here, read the message, and say, like, OK, be careful, all workloads and configurations. I press OK. And then here, you can see that it's stopping Kubernetes. And then it will restart again with, hopefully, the port that we set right now. While it's doing that, we can see the other tabs, like the supporting utilities. This is just a list of the binaries that Rancher Desktop also installed in this path, the home, your username, .local bin. We will have Elm, Kim, kubectl, nurctl. Each of these binaries stand for one purpose, and we will be looking at very quickly how we can use them, especially kubectl and nurctl. Then we will have images tab, but as the nodes are starting again, it states that it's waiting for the image manager. Once everything has been load it as you can see the image doesn't show the message no more and now it shows exactly the the list of images that are actually installed and used for the containers running inside our kubernetes cluster finally there's a small portion here image acquisition that is very nice and quite unique actually in the world of kubernetes currently which will allow us to pull or to build images directly inside the Kubernetes cluster without having to create it outside prior with Docker command or nurturetl commands and then pulling or running it inside Kubernetes. These will definitely be quite handy for certain projects. Finally, the last step will be troubleshooting where we can find the logs by clicking the button, it will open my explorer or my file explorer in this case. And then we will have the logs here. And also, if I want to reset the configuration without uninstalling and reinstalling Rancher Desktop, then I have the button of factory reset. So now that we have everything in place and everything installed and configured the way we want it, let's first see if we have kubectl in our pass. As I'm running OpenSUSE currently, my pass.local slash bin is not in it. So for the demo, I will export or update my pass variable by giving it also the dot local slash bin pass. And now if I try to find again kubectl, it finds it, as well as, of course, the other tools like nerdctl, for example. Now that I have the tooling also in place, let's see the cluster information that I can get by running kubectl cluster info. And here you can see that the control plane for Kubernetes server is actually running on local host, so 127.0.0.1, and the port that I actually gave during my configuration. That's exactly what I wanted. And by having this cluster now set up, I can try to get all the resources on all the namespaces. And here you can see everything that is currently running inside a freshly installed K3S true Rancher desktop. Of course, finally, kubectl get nodes will list all the nodes. And as we can see, we just have one node running, which has the roles of builder, 
remember, for the image building, and control plane. Finally, you can see the version also, which is running of K3S, the 121.6. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching the video, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the community website.